a bruschetta. Yo, what is up, Eddie team? Austin Dunham back again with another video. So, you know, throughout my time in calisthenics, I've met quite a bit of people. You know, I literally just got back from the workout park and every time I meet somebody, you know, they're just starting out their journey in calisthenics and maybe they've seen my tutorials before. And I tell them, I'm like, yo, like you have, you got that look, like you will be good at calisthenics. Just keep it up, keep it going, man. You're gonna progress fast. And I thought to myself, how do I know this? And through my experience with meeting people and also my own personal experience, I can practically identify whether or not somebody will be good at calisthenics just solely based on how they look. So in this video, I'm gonna share with you five of those things that I've noticed within people, um, which are early signs that they will be great or progress fast at body weight training. So here are the five things. Subscribe, like the video. Let's go ahead and get into it. Sign number one, they are naturally skinny. If you see all the best calisthenics transformations, including myself, most of these guys started off in a naturally skinny state, then built their way up. Now let's keep in mind the strength curve of body weight training, relative strength, which means how strong you are in comparison to your body weight. The skinnier guys have the easiest time with getting into calisthenics more than a fat guy would, more than even getting into weightlifting itself because it takes more strength. But as a skinny guy, even if you're weak, the kind of barrier to entry into calisthenics is a lot easier and it's a clear sign that you're gonna progress pretty fast and easily with calisthenics if you start off skinny. Like I said, even myself, I started out skinny, I started out small, you know, and um, guys who tend to have the, you know, quote unquote ectomorphic type of traits where the joints are small, naturally skinny, low appetite, tend to excel the best when it comes to calisthenics for some of those reasons like I just mentioned, but mostly because like since they're already light on their feet, it's kind of easier to progress. Sign number two, they are short. So it goes without saying, the shorter you are, the easier it is um, when it comes to learning some of these skills and you know just progressing in itself because you know we're training with our body weight so with that being said not only do we want to be light on our feet but our actual frame if our frame is short or smaller we're going to be able to excel and do things that other people can't if i take a look at one of the highest stages of body weight training in itself technically gymnastics right U.S. men's gymnastics. I guarantee you, nobody on that team is above five foot ten. Definitely not pushing six feet. Even me myself, standing flat foot, five ten and a half, with shoes on, usually five eleven through six foot. Um, I'm technically more on the taller side when it comes to all this stuff that I'm doing with body weight training. And some people might even consider uh, me kind of tall for the sport because even you know the highest. Um, street workout people, there's some outliers out there, of course, but even the best street workout people, they're more on the shorter end. It's gonna be on a range between 5'5 five, five and like 5'8. That's where you're gonna get most of the success. And it's a clear sign and a clear indicator that your height does correlate to how fast you progress in the calisthenics. So if you are a taller guy, just know that some things might be unattainable and unrealistic for you, but that doesn't mean it's impossible. It's simply just gonna take you more time. Number three, you have a narrow frame. So this kind of gets back into the ectomorphic first point that I talked about. But guys, when it comes to a narrow frame, I can identify it by basically your shoulder width, right? Your clavicle length right here. Me personally, I have a narrow frame. I'm not gonna deny it. I'm not gonna act like I don't. I have narrow shoulders, narrow, more narrow clavicles, and I have a skinnier waist. Your waistline, your rib cage, all that stuff plays into how narrow your frame is. Now, if you're like a linebacker, even if you're like five foot 10, five foot nine, and you have a really wide frame, you got naturally broad clavicles, maybe you have a broader waist, not so much of a narrow waist, then progressing in calisthenics might be a little bit more difficult for you in comparison to somebody, you know, like myself who has like a 29 inch waist around, um, more narrow shoulders, because it all translates into how effective I'm able to move my body. Handstands are easier, planches are easier. Even arm lift plays a part into how good somebody is in calisthenics. If you have a pretty large, what's called ape index, to where, you know, you have a super high wingspan, um, all the pushing and pulling exercises are gonna be a lot harder for you. Planches might be either unattainable or very, very hard for you to learn because you, your arms are so long, you know? And I've been blessed in some of these departments to where I'm able to progress fast because like I said, I have a narrow frame and also my arms aren't that long. 
So that's probably a reason why the planche came a lot faster and easier. The levers came a lot faster and easier to me than somebody else who might be at the same height, same everything, they're just wider or have longer limbs. All these genetical factors will play into how fast you progress in calisthenics. Sign number four, you are naturally flexible. I don't care what nobody says, but all the flexible people that I know were flexible when, like, from birth. You know what I mean? And most of us were flexible from birth, but somehow, some way, these people were able to maintain it into adulthood without necessarily stretching or doing anything for that matter. We all know those naturally flexible people who can bust out a split and never train for a split in their lives. They can do prayer hands behind their back because the shoulder mobility is just naturally good. I've seen this in a lot of girls, to be honest. A lot of girls naturally have very, very good shoulder mobility, very good wrist mobility. Like they're just naturally flexible. And that is why we see a lot of the acro artists uh, tend to be women, right? Because women are more flexible. Their hand stands look cleaner. All these little certain points play a part into it. And it is a genetical factor it, to some degree. And it will dictate how fast you progress and how clean some of your elements look. Now, flexibility can be learned, can be built upon through, you know, years of stretching and uh, mobility exercises, dynamic mobility exercises. But I'm speaking from people who don't have to go through all that work, right? It's gonna play a big difference. And the last sign, sign number five, is if you naturally have a good strength base. Some people are naturally, without ever doing any sort of consist consistent workout routine, able to do, you know, 20 push-ups in a row able to do five to 10 pull-ups in a row. Then tell me, you probably met somebody who could bust out at least five to 10 pull-ups and they never do pull-ups. Have probably never gone to the gym in their lives. They just, it could be a combination between their height, their frame, the skinny guys, you know, with a strong, you know, genetic muscle base. Those guys tend to progress really, really fast in calisthenics just because they already have a natural head start. So if you have a natural head start, then all the power to you because you know, it's just gonna make your life a whole lot easier when it comes to learning these skills. Like getting to one on push-ups is gonna be a piece of cake for you. Probably is only gonna take a month or two just to learn that. You're gonna, your pull-up numbers are gonna skyrocket easily. You're gonna get 15 to 20 within like three months because you already naturally have that strength base there. So guys, those were the five points that really dictate how well somebody will progress in calisthenics. And all those, some of these things are things that we are born with and we can't change. You can always progress past it to some extent and become, you know, what I like to say on my vlog channel, the best version of yourself and what you're personally capable of, right? So don't let your genetics hold you back. Just know that these signs will help you. So if you learned something from this, subscribe, like the video. Got more videos coming. See you guys in the next one. Peace.